um, this presentation is going to be on comparing mollusks to, in general, the giant squid and the colossal squid. First, let's talk about mollusks. Mollusks are the second largest phylum of invertebrates, right after the anthropods. If you don't know what anthropods are, they are basically, for example, insects and crustaceans. They are invertebrates that have an external uh, skeleton, uh, uh, appendage legs, and they have like segmented bodies. Well known mollusk invertebrates, such as the sea creatures, include snails, clams, mussels, octopus, and squid, as the two we're going to be seeing today are the giant, giant and the colossal squid. Uh, first, to compare these two, there are some differences, but there are some, some uh, similarities that some people can see in the giant and colossal squid. Uh, first, they is one of their, they're both invertebrate belongings to the phylum mollusca, as we previewed at the beginning of the slide. So they're both um, sea invertebrates, both part of the mollusk family. Simply, uh, the physical traits, they have, a, they have uh, a pair of the largest eyes on any living animal. These eyes help them see at great depths of their environment in the deep sea to help see any visible bioluminescent lights from any of their prey and spot any predators coming in front of them. And secondly, they have eight legs and two tentacles, which the two tentacles help uh, grab their prey and eat them. To continue, they, pursue, they produce bioluminescence also as well, which helps attract their prey towards them. And finally, their only predator known for both of these uh, giant squids and coastal squids are sperm whales. And sperm whales tend to only enjoy the adults, whereas the adolescents are kind of seen mostly closer to the surface where other bigger oceanic uh, predators will take advantage of those. But if you can see on a lot of uh, sperm whales, you'll notice a lot of scratch marks, which they can conclude that they are eating or having a hard time uh, fighting against these, their prey of the gigantic and colossal squid. So here's a slide showing a diagram comparing the, both of the giant squid and colossal squid. As you can see, they both do have a fin, mantle, head, arms, and tentacles. But as you can see, they also do have, they do div differentiate in size. As you can see, the colossal squid has a bigger fin compared to the giant squid. The colossal squid is a lot more shorter and stockier compared to the long and lanky squid. And then the arms and tentacles are a lot shorter on the colossal squid compared to the giant squid. Uh, going on to the differences, so we're going to first start out on the giant squid. Um, here you have a, a few names for the Latin terms, phylum, genus, and species, and family. Its Latin name is Archetetus, then goes into the phylum that which you already know, the Mollusca. The genus Archetetus, its species is Archetetus ducks, and the family Archetetidae. A uh, couple of facts about the giant squid. These giants can reach anywhere from 33 feet to 43 feet in length. The males is the biggest that they can get is 33 feet, and the males can get even bigger than them at 43 feet, and they can weigh up to 440 pounds. They hold the record for the lar largest, uh, longest tentacles, so they have a longer reach compared to that of the colossal squid. And at the end of these um, tentacles, they have suckers, which are lined with small, like, teeth which helps keep hold of this prey. Uh, they are they reproduce via uh, internal fertilization, and only, and only a few of the million eggs that they do reach into adulthood, as once they are fertile, usually bigger fish or other predators take advantage, take advantage of this opportunity as they do hatch. And then, as mentioned, the only predator that is known is the sperm whales, as for an adult. Um, this is a diagram, the biology of a giant squid. Here you can see from its fin to its tentacles, you have the stabilizing fin, which helps it swim and navigate through the ocean to the deep oceans. Its mantle, its siphon, its large eye, its head where the large eyes is. They have a parrot-like beak between their tentacles, which help them uh, consume their prey. Eight arms and then two feeding tentacles, which 
the feed tendrils help capture food and then um, helps it puts it towards that uh, parrot-like beak. Um, the giant squid habitat is kind of is mostly you can find anywhere. You can find it all over the parts of the world. There's only a few parts that you cannot find them, which is are in tropical regions or in polar latitudes. So anything close to the equator or anything from the top of the north to the south pole, you won't be able to find them. Uh, you can only find them at great, at really great depths. The only reason would you would be able to see them is if they died and somehow washed upon the shores, which people take advantage of studying and see how they died, what they had been eating and other great stuff like that. Going on to the next one, the colossal squid of its uh, differences from the giant squid. Here we'll see its Latin name, the Misoni chatidis hamiltoni. Is phylum, same thing, part of the mollusca family, which they have in common. Its genus is the Missoni chautides, species uh, Missoni chautides hamiltini, which is the same as its Latin name, and it's in the fam family uh, Cranchidae. I think that's kind of where they get that kraken, its nickname kraken from. Um, a few facts about this colossal squid. They can reach anywhere from 39 feet, which is the biggest of the biggest the males can get, to 46 feet as big as the females can get. So once again, this difference is from this male from the male length to the female's length, but the females can be the biggest out of both of them. And they are the heaviest out of all squids. They can weigh up to eleven hundred pounds. So they're pretty a pretty big, pretty big squid, and plus being stocky in length makes it pretty heavy as well. They have a longer mantle with shorter tentacles that are aligned with sharp swiveling hooks. So with that, it helps them hold on to a prey a lot better than having teeth-like hooks. So anything that has uh, swiveling hooks helps uh, catch prey. And um, with these hooks, they can catch um, any deep sea fish and some of the some that they do like are the Sartaganata and the Patagonia toothfish. These names are kind of hard, so stick with me here. Um, their specific, specific, uh, their specific uh, mating behaviors are kind of still unknown, but um, but what scientists can take from it, they do reproduce via internal fertilization. This meaning that if they don't find a partner to to make offspring with, they can fertilize their own eggs if need to be. Because being in such great depths, who knows when they'll come along to another colossal squid even if it's a female, while this one's a male, or if it's not a male, they don't have any look. So with this, internal fertilization helps them reproduce and create more of these offsprings. And then for their um, uh, other predators, so diving mammals, including the southern elephant seal and large southern ocean predators, do feed on juvenile squid, uh, juvenile, juvenile uh, colossal squid. But other than that, the uh, spermos do take advantage of these adult sized spermos. As, like I said, they are at such great depths. And spermos can dive up to uh, 500, uh, 500 meters down deep. So oh, they can kind of meet halfway. And then if they do, they can keep going even further and disturbing all these bioluminescent fish, which can uh, make these colossal squids known that, they're, that there's a predator nearby, so they should hide. But if they don't, somehow they will have to put up a fight with this sperm whale to um, get out the way. Here we find, uh, you can find a diagram of the colossal squid. So it shows its anatomy from its fan-like fin. So as you can see, its fan, it, its fin is a lot bigger compared to the gigantic squid. Its mantle is a little bit longer. Its funnel is uh, placed on the front end of its uh, head instead of on the side compared to the gigantic squid. And then its arms is a lot shorter where its tentacles are a lot longer. And like I said, with those tentacles, they do have swivel-like um, suction cups, basically, like how the giant squid have, but instead of teeth, they're more sharp and razor-like. And then for the habitat, with these ones, they they are kind of they are associated with the Antarctic, so they are also called the Antarctic squid. They can only be found in the Southern Ocean, forty degrees south of the equator, surrounding Antarctica. They can found be found deeper than a thousand meters, so they can't be found nowhere else in the world compared to that of the gigantic squid. So they can only found at very great depths in very cold waters, such as the Antarctic Ocean. And that will be all for this presentation.